Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 12 of the chapter Solutions. We have been studying about liquid solutions and I discussed the Raoult's law in relation to volatile solutes and solvents or mixtures of volatile liquids. Sometimes you have a solvent that is volatile and the solute may be a solid and obviously it is non-volatile. In such a condition, how is the vapor pressure affected? That is what we are going to study in this video. So the topic of this video is vapor pressure of solutions of solids in liquids. These are two beakers and in beaker one, we have pure solvent and in beaker two, we have an equimolar solution of solvent and solute. That is one mole of solvent and one mole of solute. It's an equimolar solution. And here we have the pure solvent. What happens as a result of the addition of solute? As you know, for any liquid in a closed vessel, like the water in this bottle, the water will turn at any temperature. Some molecules of water will have more energy and they will escape in the form of water vapor and be trapped inside the, uh, the top of the bottle. Now on the top of this vessel, the pressure of the vapors will go on increasing till it becomes stabilized when the equilibrium is established and the number of molecules which are entering back into the liquid, uh, into the water as liquid and the number of molecules that are escaping, they become constant. So for every temperature, for every liquid, the vapor pressure is fixed. So the water that is present here has a specific vapor pressure at this point or at this temperature. Now for this pure water, the surface, all of the surface consists of water molecules and therefore the vapor pressure. Now vaporization is a surface phenomena. Evaporation is a process that takes place of the molecules on the surface which have more energy and which escape in the form of vapors. But if you have a solute mixed in the solvent to, to form a solution, then on the surface, you do not have just the molecules of the solvent. You have molecules of the solute too. So the, the space which is occupied by the molecules of solute, the solute is non-volatile. So the solvent molecules, the available space for solvent molecule reduces. As a result of that decreased surface area available to the solvent molecules, the molecules now cannot escape at the same rate as they did in case of a pure solvent. So what happens as a result of addition of solute is that the molecules of solute of the non-volatile solute which occupy the surface, they block the molecules of this volatile solvent from entering in the vapor phase. And therefore, the vapor pressure of this particular solvent on addition of the solute, it decreases. And this is known as the decrease of vapor pressure as a result of addition of a non-volatile solute. Examples of such solutions, um, any solution where you have a non-volatile uh, solute are sodium chloride, glucose, urea, sugar. When they are added in water, they form such mixtures. And these are all, you know, uh, solutes which are soluble in water. And iodine and sulfur, which are not soluble in water, but do, they do dissolve in carbon disulfide, they would also have such properties. Where the solvent is volatile, but the solute is non-volatile. Now, you know that any solution is actually a mixture. There is no chemical bonding between the solvent and the solute. And since there is no chemical bonding between them, the chemical properties of the components do not change. But the addition of solute to the solvent or such mixtures, the physical properties of such mixtures are different. And that is what we have seen in the case of uh, the vapor pressure. If you had a pure solvent, it had more vapor pressure. But when you have uh, solvent and solute, the vapor pressure was decreased, which is a physical property. So physical properties of solutions are different from those of pure solvent, while chemical properties may remain the same. Decrease in vapor pressure of the solvent, what does it depend on? It depends entirely on the quantity of the non-volatile solute and not on the quality of the non-volatile solute. 
For example, if I have one mole of solute and one mole of solvent, the solute may be any solute for water. Let's take, say we take water as the solvent. If I take one mole of sodium chloride or I take one mole of glucose or I take one mole of urea or I take one mole of sugar, the depression in the vapor pressure or the decrease in the vapor pressure in all the cases will be the same irrespective of the nature of the solute right irrespective of the nature of the solute you will always have the vapor pressure decreasing as a result of the addition of the same amount of solute so the decrease in the vapor pressure of the solvent does not depend on the nature of the solute it only depends on the quantity of the solute so Raoult's law can now be modified and it, you can have a general form for Raoult's law and that general form would be that the statement would be for any solution the partial pressure the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component now in that case we were talking of a mixture of volatile liquids i have a guest right here tommy look who i have i have a new student here tommy <laughs> okay so Raoult's law in the general form you could change the statement of the Raoult's law for any solution the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component we were talking of a mixture of volatile liquids in this case we have the solute is non-volatile and the solvent is volatile so whatever is the number of components that are volatile for all those the Raoult's law would be uh, applicable. So we say for any solution the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component in the solution would directly be proportional to its mole fraction. It does not depend on the nature it only depends on the mole fraction that is x. So for a non-volatile solute let us say the solvent is 1 and solute is 2. Then the vapor pressure of the solvent 1, how will it be affected? Vapor pressure of solvent P1 would be directly proportional to its mole fraction in the mixture. And we know that P1 is, what is the proportionality constant? P1 naught. Where P1 naught would be the vapor pressure of the solvent in its pure state without the addition of the solute. So if we plot a curve, we get a linear curve. The curve is between vapor pressure and the mole fraction of the solvent. So initially, if we have only the solute, the uh, mole fraction of solvent at this point is zero. And as the concentration of the solvent, let us say, goes on increasing, for example, we took sugar in a jar and we kept adding water to it. And as we keep adding water, the solvent keeps adding, the mole fraction of the solvent goes on increasing and since it is only water that has and that is volatile, the vapor pressure goes on increasing and it goes or if we started from the other side that we had pure solvent, then the vapor pressure was P1. But as we go on adding the solute, the mole fraction of the water goes on decreasing and therefore its vapor pressure goes on decreasing till you have no uh, solvent and only solute present in it. So you get it's a linear function. You will get a straight line if you start plotting from both sides, they will join and you will find that the vapor pressure would be a linear function of the mole fraction. And that is what is Raoult's law. So this was just a short video to explain this topic to you. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.